right. Well, welcome back, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, my name is Brian Hurd, Vice President of Build by Thrive Mortgage. Um, with me, as always, is our co-host, Natalie Roberts, Principal of Social Strategies. And of course, on the other end of the equipment, we have our illustrious producer, Raul Espinosa. Hello, Raul. Ooh. What's up? Uh, have you What's here up, today. Super. Excited. How's Dallas, Texas today, Raul? Oh, man. It's good. It feels good. The weather's finally really good. So I'm enjoying it. Still working on the studio, guys. So be patient. We will have a full fledged studio like you. Not, not everyone's lucky like you guys to have a full on <laughs> studio, man. All right. Well, in all fairness, you did set the studio up before you left. So yeah. that's well, at yeah, least you had a big part in that. So, um, but hey, we're, we're glad you're here, even though you're not still Basically. here anymore. But, um, couldn't do this without you, yeah. of course. And, um, you know, of course, having uh, Natalie join the show uh, adds a whole nother dimension of flair and, and excitement. So, Dimensions. I yes, like it. Yes, it, yes, does. Yes. So, it does. Glad you're back with us, of <laughs> course. Um, yeah. So, you know, we'd like to talk every week about um, everything from housing trends to uh, what's going on in the market. Um, you know, and I think this week what we really want to do is – dig a little bit deeper into what impact COVID has had, you know, and not just the, the typical stuff in terms of, uh, you know, real estate prices and all that, but what, you know, really dig into trends and, and, you know, where housing design and all that's going. So Natalie, I, uh, since you were uh, the one to bring our special guest on, why don't you uh, do the introduction? Yeah, absolutely. Um, when we were all talking, uh, one of the subjects came up. How are people living differently? And what are they asking from the market? What are we seeing? And Raul decided that he probably wasn't the expert in this subject. So we scanned the country, uh, made a few phone calls, and we were able to connect with Daryl Pat Patterson. Uh, Daryl is an architect out of Jacksonville, Florida. Um, licensed in five states. She is also the president of Housing Design Matters. Wow. And with that, I think we we might bring Miss Daryl in. I wonder how long that was going to go. That's, that's <laughs> quite, the, uh, quite the list. So, I like yeah. minutes. Well, <laughs> welcome, Daryl. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. So, you know, if there's anything Natalie didn't cover, you know, give us a little background. Why? Um, and I have to, I knew I was going to ask this ahead of time because my daughter, uh, she really wants to be an architect. So I uh, would love to kind of hear your story and, and what, your, what your path is, if you don't mind sharing them. You know, um, ever since I was maybe 10 or 12, um, I found a set of floor plans and I went, wow, that's what you know, house was under construction. I went, I want to do that. And my mother never told me that, well, you can't because you're a woman. So I just kind of went down that path and I've loved it. Um, I didn't originally start out doing um, housing, but um, I have found it to be a very strategic advantage because so much of the home buying decision is made by the woman. So, you know, I get the things that resonate with women that, you know, maybe is, is less important to a guy. So, um, I did a whole series on um, housing design solutions from a working mom's point of view. Um, that is amazing. Yeah. So, so what's but what's amazing now is what we're seeing is the effect of, of COVID nineteen on housing. And you know, I think originally we kind of thought, well, maybe this is just going to be um, a temporary effect. But I think it's really changing the way we look at our houses, how we live in our houses. Um, the work from home thing in the schooling from home, that's going to stay. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to have an effect on commercial real estate. Uh, but, but we're also getting, um, we're, we're relying more heavily on, on deliveries, home deliveries, and people are getting used to groceries and, and food deliveries. Outdoor living has become, it's been very important, but even more so now the whole idea of fresh air the home gym. Hey, we're closed out from our gym. People find solutions. So that's one. The stay vacation, you know, is your home stay vacation worthy? And we'll talk about that. Um, yeah. That was discovering your inner gourmet, um, multifamily is changing and even clubhouse is changing. So those are some of the topics 
So that I want to, if we have time, we'll get into all of them. But I think just let's start with that um, working from home and schooling from home. So, you know, it used to be we had one big, beautiful den, like maybe the room I'm in now, you know, double doors off the foyer. It was very pretty. <laughs> and then Zoom came along, right? And all of a sudden it was noisy and you had, you couldn't, you know, no one could work. You know, two people can't work in this room. Terrible lighting, stuff like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, and then, then wait a minute, you need two dens, one for him and then one for her. Wait now, if you need something for the kids. And if it's more than one kid, then they're different classes. So suddenly this whole work from home dynamic, school from home has really changed. We're seeing the opportunity for multiple pocket offices throughout the house. Acoustical privacy has importance. I have barn doors on my office. Work. Barn doors are worthless. <laughs> yes, I've learned that as well. Sound, yes, yes, exactly. Eliminating sound. Um, and we're also seeing uh, one of our builders in, in Austin is looking to add the auxiliary dwelling units to the backyard, yeah. whether that's a little schoolhouse or it's just that that, that office. But um, you know, just yesterday I was talking to a builder. He says, I'm not going back to the office. Maybe, you know, once in a while for a meeting, he said, I get more work done. I don't get interrupted. I don't have the commute. Um, so, yeah, that's a, that's a biggie. So so we're seeing that for sure. That's a, that's a biggie. Um, the increased home delivery. So one of the things that uh, solutions um, that we've come up with at Housing Design Matters is the parcel delivery vestibule. And it's actually an idea borrowed from. Uh, so if you lived up north and you had this like airlock an outer door and an inner door to keep the, you know, keep the cold air out. Well, it's that same idea, only now there's like five feet between the doors. So UPS or Amazon delivery guy opens the first door, puts the package in, closes the door and off it goes. And now it's out of sight. And if that vestibule is now air conditioned or heated, depending on where you live, it's now suitable for grocery deliveries. You know, maybe you're not home when the groceries are delivery, but now they're in, in conditioned space. It's great for um, for food. Um, my son uses Grubhub for all his deliveries. I'm like, <laughs> uh, so so those food deliveries. And if you think about um, one of the things COVID's done is made um, seniors not want to leave their home and go into uh, congregate care facilities. So having this this opportunity to receive goods and services without having to leave their home. So, um, you know, the groceries for sure, or maybe they just don't want to go out at night because they don't like to drive at night. So this is going to be a thing right. biggie for that. So Daryl, you mentioned, um, vestibules and heating and cooling. A few years back, I, I had the privilege of working on a very forward thinking project that um, were high end million plus condominiums called the Backyard Austin. And in that, um, one of the top selling features for our buyers was a separate area that did include the heating and cooling um, option with the vestibule. Is that something that you're finding your home builders are asking for? And if so, is it specific to an age demographic? Or, or price point. Yeah. Great. Well, it's definitely, uh, it's not in the starter homes. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are seeing um, really a lot of people embrace it. At first they were like, wait, what? And then COVID hit and they're like, oh yeah, we got to have that. And um, I've got one builder who's really excited because he thinks it's that uh, differentiator between him and, you know, some of these national builders who've been do building the same old, same old thing. And um, we're doing a lot of kind of this, you know, the pocket offices and the parcel delivery vestibule. And he's a new builder, new to the town. So it's exciting to see that. So we're going to see it catching on. Um, um, you know, the early adopters will be the ones that I think are going to kind of make their reputation on it. So we're excited about it. So we'll see how it goes. And I've I, seen I, some, we've got some custom builders that have been doing it in Houston for a few years now. And, and it seemed like a really kind of cool novel idea, but yeah, I mean, you really have to believe that, you know, if you want, you get your beer delivered, you want your beer cold, you know, or, or, you know, let's, let's talk about the, the amount of theft that's obviously going to come with having everything point. delivered. You know, even if it's not, you know, you mentioned that the starter homes don't have it, you know, and having heated and cooled vestibules may be a little bit more of a challenge. But I would expect there's going to be some integration, at least for Amazon deliveries and that sort of thing to make it a safer proposition. So um, 
what, if anything, is is the most surprising mm. in your opinion in terms of you know where things are headed design wise, or is there anything ex- surprising at this point? <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, well, the most surprising, um, I think the, the whole idea of how we use our homes. So, um, part of that is what we call like this sort of stay vacation worthy. We got to make our houses stay vacation worthy because they canceled that trip to Italy. Um, and they took that money and they are putting in pools, they're putting in spas, they're putting in putting greens. Um, they're expanding their outdoor living. You know, the whole idea that, um, access to fresh air and sunshine um, it has been really a part of this whole wellness formula. And um, the other thing is kitchens. Um, you know, if you can't go to a restaurant, people are starting to really cook. So um, I hear that, you know, bread, uh, you can't buy yeast in the grocery stores because everybody wants to make bread. So we're seeing a lot of remodeling happening. They're getting these high-end ovens that have the proofing uh, feature so that it allows their bread to rise. Um, they're adding the little undercounter ref- refrigerators for their wine. Pantries are getting bigger because they are stocking up in toilet paper. Okay, wait. <laughs> um, so it's really kind of discovering that inner gourmet as, you know, people don't like to be locked out um, from things they love. So they're, they're getting... They're finding ways. Um, the home gym is another one. Uh, got locked out of the uh, out of the, the gyms, so they're buying Peloton. But they can get them. They're they're waitlisted or the Nordic tracks or the Bowflex machines. Um, and we're seeing, you know, once you get a Peloton, the people who have them, they love them, and they, you know, they 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 get addicted to them. So they really love that. But we're also seeing. Um, with Zoom, doing um, personal training sessions in your home. So you get your Pilates instructor on the Zoom. You set up your little camera so so they can see, you know, if you're doing it right. Um, so that's another one of these things that, the, the, you know, the home exercise um, has been a really biggie. Um, yeah, I actually just said that. This mine, speaking of outdoor living, a friend of mine is an architect, uh, lives in downtown Boston, and he, and he downsized. He thought he would be cool. He moved downtown, urban living, you know, walkable, everything. And then the shutdown came and he couldn't go outside. All of the public spaces in his building were shut down and he didn't have a balcony. So he truly felt trapped. So we're going to see a ripple effect of that in in multi-housing is that, you know, people are really going to want a balcony, even if it's just a little small space. Mm -hmm. Um, But in single family, what we've been seeing, you know, with the outdoor living on the back is great. But also that front porch is a great way to stay connected. Um, As we say, you can have social distancing without social isolation. Um, And that's really important, too, for seniors. Um, You know, if they live alone and they're a little fearful of going out, you know, sitting on your front porch and be able to say hi to your neighbors as they walk by the fourth time with the dog. Right. (laughs) Walking the dog. So. Well, and and I think Daryl, you do work with a lot of active adult communities. Um, if I saw correctly, do a lot of the same trends that we're seeing in other areas um, still apply to that oh, demographic absolutely. in those communities? Absolutely, You're seeing the same especially, same trends, especially the cooking piece for sure. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, and then trickling into multifamily, you know, we talked about the idea of the balcony, but the other thing you know, is we're kind of two, two trends going on at the same time. If you can do multifamily with individual entrances. So you may have a second floor unit, but you have a first floor foyer so that you're not getting in an elevator. You're not going up a common stairwell. You're not touching, you know, ew, I'm not touching. Right. Um, yeah. Couldn't uh, that even be used as well, Daryl? Like let's take, for example, we, yeah, I have multiple friends and family who one member of the household has contracted COVID. Mm -hmm. That space could be used potentially for that person to quarantine quarantine, for two weeks because there is an access from the, from different. Who would have thought we'd be talking about needing an actual quarantine space in your your home. And and, and I, I, I don't laugh because it's not a serious issue. It's just ironic that, that that's viable, you know, a a viable thing. We're talking about that now, you know, exactly. Right. Yeah. 
It is. It is. And then one other thing I just want to wanted to back up to um, the 55 plus um, and prepping for today's podcast. I, I called my my parents in South Florida and I was curious. I said, you know, now that you're home, they're they're your standard 55 plus um, immune compromise. So they haven't been yeah. able to go out. And interestingly enough, one of the key things that I w- that my mother shared with me is it's it's all about the spaces you've talked. And then uh, for me, this was uh, lit my my eyes up. They've also created now they've taken um, the back outdoor space and they've created a tiki hut. And in that, it's so that they can have a happy hour with a neighbor from a socially distanced space. Is it, is it a shared sure. tiki hut? It's like they're all so she does live in a restricted community mm-hmm. and they have the golf carts and, you know, and so they're all very careful. But it's a um, it's a repeating theme now that's going on mm-hmm. where if each home has it, you can sit in your tiki hut and talk to me in my tiki hut. And oh, we're having so you each cocktail. have your own. Yeah. Well, and it fits perfectly into, Dara, what you were saying in terms of, you know, the staycation and having these outdoor living spaces. Right. And, and yeah. I think used to be just, I ah, just have a, a patio with some some patio furniture and that was it. No, 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 no. We're talking, you know, really fancy open air and, yeah. and tiki torches <laughs> with kegerators in them, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and the, you know, my neighbors built this elaborate outdoor barbecue grill with all the stone patio and it's... It's actually gas and it's stainless steel and it's beautiful. And it's, you know, it's people are investing in their backyards and, um, and it's, it's exciting. Um, but it's because if you're not going out and you step back and you look around and you're like, I can do better. So I think, um, and I think that's driving new housing demand. I think it's driving remodeling. Um, it's just driving a lot of new trends and it's, it's, um, it's exciting. It's challenging. It's scary for some other industries. Um, yeah. uh, so let, let me ask you, so, you know, you, you talked about investing and, and let's, you know, let's, let's unpack that a little bit. So specifically it, it is, you know, you have pools and outdoor spaces and all that, that traditionally don't equate to a dollar for dollar investment. Do you see that changing now with the proliferation of these, you know, really, um, fancy outdoor spaces. Do you see those things bringing a lot more inherent value to properties? I do. I yeah. do. Um, we see a lot of people um, right now. I'm in upstate South Carolina and we see a lot of people coming from Chicago um, and, and other areas to get away from the city, yeah. to be outside, to enjoy these outdoor spaces. Um, and it, you know, there's no inventory and it's just, they're seeking, they're seeking lifestyle. They're not just seeking shelter; they're seeking lifestyle, and um, and I think that's uh, I think it's going to last. I think that's going to be you know just, just that whole raising the bar. I mean, you remember when there was no cup holders in your cars, right? And now you've got mm. cup holders, heated seats, cooled seats, heated steering wheels. We just keep raising the bar, and that's really what COVID has done to housing: is we've raised the bar to what we now um, demand and expect. And, you know, and, and we talked a little bit about, you know, starter houses. We're seeing um, couples who were engaged, who had their weddings postponed and postponed, mm-hmm. and they just took that money and they put in the house. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Um, changing priority. So, um, yeah. Exciting. Well, and, and, and let me ask one more question and I'll, I'll shut up and let Natalie talk. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, so, uh, you know, it, it, we've seen housing do so well this year. You know, obviously there was a a drop off uh, as expected, you know, April time frame, uh, March and April, but um it's done so well. Mm-hmm. What is your take? Why is specifically, I mean housing in general, but new construction, I mean it's mm-hmm. it's on fire right now. What's your take on that? Why is that? When we're in the middle of a pandemic. Well, um when you can't go, you know, if you, if you live in a lousy place, um, but you live in, you know, like my daughter lives in Brooklyn and she lives mm-hmm. in a loud place, by the way. And, you know, but they're going to this, this street party or this event. They're, they're going, they're always going. Um, you know, they, and they go to work. Um, now they don't. Now they're working from home. Um, two of them in a little tiny place. It is just raising that whole awareness and people are like, 
I, you know, I, I want my own place. I want it to be good. I want it, um, I want it to um, support my wellness. Um, so kind of like what you said earlier, I mean, you're taking inventory of what you have and, you know, mm -hmm. if it's lacking in certain areas, you know, I, it was interesting, the comment about, you know, saving up money instead mm -hmm. of, you know, getting married and all that, using it towards a house. You know, maybe people are willing to forego some areas so that they can push up their timeline. You know, people want fresh and clean and new. Yeah. And right. And to your point, if, if, if. You know, it's always been a large segment of of home home building in, in our buying sector. But to your point, if I'm going to spend, if I'm your daughter and I'm living in Brooklyn or I'm living in Austin, Texas, we both know, you know, there's a, the rents are extremely yeah. high for both markets. Yeah. I think it's giving you that space and that time to reevaluate. Do I want to spend $28, $3,200 on a space that doesn't work for me. I don't have outdoor living. I can't work out at home. I'm, you know, the, uh, the wall behind me for my Zoom meetings in corporate America is inappropriate. And so I'm going to take that money and I'm going to bite the bullet. And then yeah. you combine that, you know, with other factors that are coming in that are just making it very easy to buy right yeah. now. And, you know, I think, I think housing is um, stealing from other industries um, you know, my girlfriend, I said, Hey, there's a new shoe store. Let's go, let's go shoe shopping. And she said, I wear sketchers every day. I don't go into the office. True. I don't yeah. shoes. Um, I, I, walked, I walked past a, a store in downtown Greenville called dressed up and I look in the window and there's sweatpants <laughs> in, a, in a store called dressed up. Wow. Sweatpants in the, the store called dressed up. So, so we are really, we're taking um, from a lot of industries, yeah. you are not driving to work. We're not spending the money on gas. Maybe one less car. I don't know. Um, it's just it's all shifting to housing because when you have to shelter in place, you want that place to be worth it. Mm -hmm. So, Raul, you know, let's let's have you. Uh, I'd like to ask you a question. So, you moved obviously recently in the middle of a, a this whole thing. Yeah. What was important to you? Oh, well, that was the thing is uh, we had already were planning on moving when COVID hit. So I didn't have a lot of time to plan to get a house, but um, yeah. that, that was a big problem. So I was like, oh my God, I'm going to move somewhere and then I'm going to have to get a house because I was like, I can't, you know, it's really hard to do this in an apartment. I mean, thank God it's just three of us, just me and my wife and my daughter oh, and my dog, I guess four. Um, <laughs> but uh, he's a big dog too. But um but yeah, no, it's been it's been pretty hard. But uh, right now, like in my apartment, uh, what what makes it kind of hard is that like we don't have a dining room, so I have to because because of uh, working from home, so I have to get my computer there and like a nice background because I do a ton of meetings and uh, things like this, um, and so we don't have a we don't have a dining room anymore. And so what we did is we went to uh, IKEA and we bought this foldable dining room table uh, that I mean it literally folds up to about like pretty, pretty thin. Like when you can put the flaps up to make it like a bigger yeah. table, but it's pretty small. And then I, I just put wheels in the bottom so we can actually move it around. So whenever we need to actually have like a bigger dinner or something like that, brilliant. But you literally mm -hmm. have a table with wheels. Yes. Wow. <laughs> I love it. It's functioning. <laughs> Very functional. Yeah. It, it, and it's, it's, it's funny because when we just had to rethink, like, you know, we don't really need the dining room as much as like a home sure. office. Mm -hmm. And so it's funny cause we had to rethink all that. And um, and then just get creative, you know, like I, mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm actually, truth be told, I'm not good with tools at all. <laughs> so that's <laughs> a, that's a bold wheels. thing to admit on air. Yeah. Yeah. For a man. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, the table actually didn't come with the wheels. Like I had a, they weren't, it wasn't made to be. Uh, so that was a project. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, so it was, it was kind of a project and that made me feel kind of manly when I. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> all part right. Of it too was, um. Uh, like we, you mentioned like the gym and all that, like there's a space, uh, we have two patios. So one of them I'm using for like my outdoor gym because I don't mm. want to go pay a membership right now because I mean, you have yeah. to wear a mask and like, I think some, I've heard some of the places you have yeah. to like tell them in advance that you're going to go like schedule meetings. I'm like, I'm not going to do all that. So, um, my second patio we're just using as, um, like a little outdoor gym. You know, so Raul's you know. pumping iron on the uh, patio for everybody to see. And that's, putting that's tables kinda... together <laughs> like the handyman you are. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Hey man, I'm, well, I'm, I'm, I'm working out with a five pound jump rope. So it, it, it's pretty manly. 
Well, it's been I, it, it getting equipment is right. is difficult. I mean, I was fortunate enough we we built a house a room in our house uh, planning this well before the pandemic, but you know even trying to fill in some gaps, it's mm-hmm. it's extremely difficult. So, mm-hmm. um, but you know, I think that that brings up a, my next question for you, Daryl. Is you know you talked a little bit about multifamily. Um, do you see a lot more attention to th- these types of concerns? You know whether it's um, you know, kitchens or lack thereof of, of a kitchen table space or dining room. I mean, dining rooms were kind of going the way of the dinosaur for a while anyway. Correct. Formal. But mm-hmm. obviously when you have a smaller space, you know, 800 square feet, 1500 square feet, whatever, is, are, are you seeing a lot of condos, townhouses, apartments that are utilizing the space differently for these types of things? For the space planning yeah. makes sense. Yeah. So the craziest project we have in the office right now um, is we're calling it horizontal apartments. And what it is, is it's we're doing these detached apartments and as small as 650 square feet, as large as 1400 square feet. Um, the, the 650 has no garage and it, it's attached on one side. But what it has is a private outdoor space, a fence okay. yard, a covered outdoor space. Um, and the dining room is gone, um, and it's really just the kitchen island is where you eat. Um, and then what we've got is then the, the next plan up at 850 adds the flex room, has, adds the home office with the doors. So, yes, we are absolutely seeing that, and it's, that, it's, it's detached, it's private, private outdoor space, um, and, um, you know, originally they, they thought this would be a great thing for pets. And, um, but now what we're seeing is just a great thing for COVID. So, um, good, good timing on their part. And out of curiosity, um, which markets are you seeing that happen more, or I should say at a quicker pace? And then are you seeing a significant increase in, with what the developer or builder is able to ask in rents for that? Well, I don't know about the rents yet. We haven't gotten that far. Literally, we're just starting it. But we've got multiple projects. Uh, the detached apartments, those are in um, Jacksonville, Florida. We're doing some three-story townhomes that are that do have garages that are six, 18 and 16 feet wide. So, you know, but again, the individual front door, not going in somebody else. And that one's in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. We've got another apartment um, rental project townhomes in Tampa coming up. Mm -hmm. Um, I've got a client in Birmingham, Alabama, who's doing this. So uh, we're seeing a lot of markets and, you know, it's when you have a lot of um, change in, in the work environment, you know, unemployment, people are changing careers. Um, I just heard Disney's laying off a bunch of people. These people are going to go somewhere else. And so certainly rental um, is a good alternative for that kind of change in, in your, your career. Um, and then you add COVID to it. Um, so it's just, it's an interesting, mm-hmm. it's an interesting dynamic, but um, we've seen yeah. examples in, in uh, Texas um, of these, um, these detached apartments seen it in Phoenix. So I think you're going to see it in a lot of places. Well, that brings up the point. Great point on that one. Um, I was a week or two ago, I was out in Sacramento and um, it wore with um, falling in the cross modular housing side. But in that, I was surprised when we were touring the market and we were looking at what's currently available, which is almost next to nothing. nothing. Yeah. It, it was um, shocking. Even to worse see. because of the wildfires. But right. Yeah. With and well, and then there, um, California is up 36 percent with sales year over, which you know, similar to Austin being up 60 percent, the market year in Daryl, we're just seeing this significant increase quick enough. No, one of the bit one of the factors in um, both single family residential and in cross modular, which surprised me that it is crossing over, are ADU units in the backyard, yeah. and yeah. it's it's threefold. It's you know it's most likely more than that. It's home office, it's school, it's mm-hmm. potential income for somebody who may be nervous. That is my job secure. Have I been furloughed? Where am I at in this? And then it could be the workout. So you're, we're, I think we're finding that. And could that potentially be essentially the um, the apartments that you're talking about? It's really just taking that 
concept and putting that out across markets. But with the ADU units, my long-winded point is- um, I was wondering where this was actually (laughs) going to get to. Are you finding, I I have to go around the block to get there. You know this. (laughs) Um, Are you finding that builders are offering this as part of their programming? Right, correct. We do have one builder in in Austin who uh, they build in Austin and San Antonio that are, it's part of that. They're, they're doing it. They're offering it. They're showcasing it. Now that begs the question, how much space do you have in your backyard? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. as lots and land, you know, lots get smaller, land gets more expensive. So um, not everybody can do it, but we are seeing in, um, and maybe you saw this in, uh, in Sacramento, you know, an existing neighborhood that has a big backyard um, from a modular standpoint, there was one um, builder developer who, builds these things modular and then they lift them over the house mm-hmm. and put in the backyard as, as a unit. Now, uh, I think, think that was in Portland um, or in Seattle, but the challenge is um, there's a lot of municipalities who won't allow that. Which is a big issue. I mean, we we have a a monthly coalition, so to speak, on manufactured and, and modular, and, and ADUs are specifically a really sore topic in markets, specifically like Seattle. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it, it it doesn't surprise me. Right, but it's so needed. Yes, for sure. And you know, I think the other thing that we haven't mentioned is the, this. Uh, you know, a couple of years ago, or maybe it's more than a couple, Lennar came out with their um, the next gen suite, and it was mm. um, that yeah. that opportunity for mom and dad to to stay in the house. Um, it is a more expensive, makes the house more expensive, yeah. um, but I think nobody really is excited about putting their parents in a senior care facility right now. So I do think that yeah. those dual generation suites are going to really resonate. Um, they do well in California. They don't do as well in other markets. Um, part of it is ethnic. Some mm-hmm. ethnicities really are good with mom and dad being there um, and others maybe less so. So, you know, just sort of a cultural family sure. tradition. So um, I think you're going to see those. And, you know, when the time comes for mom and dad to move out, it does become a great home office space. So um, great point. Yeah, so I think there's a. I think that's going to get some some fresh new legs. Um, Ro, yeah. you look like you wanted to ask something a few minutes ago, so uh, you didn't forget. Yeah. He was his lips were pursing. Were he, was, they? He, was, he was ready. Were you getting excited I, I, over I, there? It's going to be preps? something really good. I hope so. <laughs> oh man, go for I it. Forgot. No. He forgot. Well, there was a point with Raul too, where I did see you perk up when we talked about staycations. And that staycation being at your home, right? And creating yeah. that space. No, you know, you know, I mean, there was a, there was a couple of things I wanted to jump in on, but one, one of them actually, um, uh, well, the staycation thing for sure uh, has uh, also um, kind of affected me as well, because we did have plans to go. Uh, we had a, uh, tickets for two trips. And so now we're, we're, we have to figure out what to do before December, before those expire. Yeah. But, but yeah, no, um, the other thing I was going to say was, um, um, one of the things that I think a lot of people are doing right now, uh, cause you touched uh, on Daryl about, um, a lot of like, um, Grubhub and things like that. A lot of people are doing like working these jobs now because we, we can now work these jobs after our jobs mm. and there's not like a big yeah. interview process. And, and so one of the things that really motivated me and my wife personally is since this whole thing started is, um, we've been doing DoorDash on the weekends at nights and, uh, for, to actually save up for a house and pay off our debt and stuff like that. And it's actually really good money and it doesn't really affect our, um, you know, our normal jobs either. And so, uh, that's That's one of the main things. The main motivator was like the next quarantine, we're going to be in a house. And then the second thing was, (laughs) Uh, let's not say next. Yeah. Don't put that. Let's just say once this thing whole abates, then Daryl's never coming back because you said that. (laughs) Oh, you made the point is, is, oh my gosh, I want to get out of this, yes, whatever this is. And if I'm going to shelter in place, it's going to be a good place. Yep. And it's going yep. to be a place that is going to help my family nurture and live and grow together. And, yes. um, yeah. Yeah. And, and I don't mean to say like, yeah, next quarantine, but, it, <laughs> but we know I, what I, you meant. But oh, the maybe. thing about it though, too, is like, 
you know, it, it was it was kind of like, a, oh, man, like we got this new apartment. Like normally we're pretty excited about that. But it really was like, oh, man, like we don't have any space anymore. Like it was supposed to be kind of a temporary thing. But now sure. it's just been kind of like, oh, man, this is like longer than expected. Uh, but I mean, th- that definitely is the main motivator is the mm-hmm. quarantine is like, we, go. we got to do something about this. We need multiple uh, offices. Like my daughter, you know, um, is just cramped up in a room all day and, um, she's having like older people problems, you know, like when she's done with school, um, she wants to actually go do something cause she's been, she's been in her room all day and she does not really happy being home. Like after school, we call that the wiggles in our house, bro. (laughs) (laughs) Old people problems, wiggles. He's 11 and 43. We got got (laughs) multiple generational wiggles. Just all sorts of like older people problems. I think like her eyes are all blurry because she's uh, been staring at the screen Screen. all day. Uh, All sorts of stuff. Well, look at time management. I mean, you know, it used to be uh, school generally is be here in your chair. We will tell you what to do. Well, now, you know, they're managing their own time. And I think in some cases that's tremendous for them to learn, but it's also tremendous. Yeah. Pressure for them. You're, you're keep crossing over me, but yeah. So, yeah. So tremendous knowledge, (laughs) but you know, but at the same time pressure as well. I mean, they have to really live up to this, you know, I have to be on this call at this particular time yes. and, and all yes. that. So, so yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not right. something, I mean, not that my kid's an irresponsible kid. She, she does phenomenal in school, mm-hmm. but these are new challenges that they've never faced. And I know Carter and, and, yes. and all of our kids are seeing the same thing. Yeah. So, and it is kind of hard good. to do, do their like dance class uh, in zoom. So <laughs> <laughs> that's like, next level. Yeah. yeah. Like the, I yes. think, yeah. Uh, uh, one of the things that they're going to have to work out is uh, those type of like the activity stuff. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know if Carter could do football over soon. That would be a little. Tough. No, we no, but drills, we start, but... we're starting the socially distanced sport of tennis next week. Uh, so um, I think to your point, Daryl, and how we're all changing, it's changing on every level of life for every age of life and in what we're choosing to do. And even the sports we play as children or what, you know, how we communicate in a home with our family. Um, I can tell you from a personal perspective, I have connected more with my family now because of COVID and because we were able to get the aunties and the uncles into this, into this century and get them on zoom. And so there's a lot of positives that have come from COVID and, and, and connection. Um, I think we're learning how to connect in new ways that we never thought, but when we don't live in the same state, we're connecting more than we previously did, I believe. Well, I think Zoom and all that has really helped because if you think about it, you know, I don't know how many decades ago, you know, the the new thing was going to be the video phone. Well, once that technology actually hit, you know, yeah, there's FaceTime, but most people just interact over Snapchat or Instagram or Facebook and all right. that. That's not real interaction. Whereas, you know, when you can do it over a format like this, have an actual discussion, mm-hmm. you know, that that's, you know, that's a really good point. I mean, really do interact. It's meaningful interaction, so to speak. So agreed. Um, okay. So, you know, being respectful of time, I, I, you know, I've got a few, well, let me, let me end with uh, a, a three part question, but what would you say the top three things that uh, builders uh, and realtors really should uh, be aware of what's most important for them to be, you know, as they're either showing houses or, or building houses um, or trends. The, the, the work from home, the more than one office space, for sure. Yeah. Um, if you can demonstrate as a realtor how that fourth guest bedroom can be, um, you know, 11 months out of the year, it can be a home office. And maybe there's a Murphy bed that gets out of the way for, you know, most of the time. Yeah. But just being creative on how people can use their spaces because, you know, not everybody wants to work on the kitchen counter or the dining room table. So, so I think having those spaces, those private rooms for the, the working from home for sure. Um, wow, what's next? Uh, would it be would it be the increase to home deliveries, the outdoor living, or the home gym? Um, <laughs> that's really. It, I think that's where um, realtors and builders really need to connect with their buyers and ask them. Yeah. If you were to rank priorities would, would it be i think i think outdoor living for sure um but is it the home gym over the parcel delivery vestibule 
Um, you know, I think that's where the challenge is. Um, and I think it's just about those those connections and just getting to know your buyers. And, um, you know, one size doesn't fit all. So I think we just need to uh, really showcase how we can be creative and how we use our, our houses and, and focus on housing solutions. Maybe not so much marketing, but the actual housing mm, solution yeah. for buyers. So. I like it. I like it. That's Thank you. Great. I wanted to um, ask and, and give you a minute to tell us a little bit about your blog, Daryl, and oh. what you cover on that. No, I, I yeah. could. We, I think we all took a quick yeah. look through, and oh, yeah. um, it jumped out at me with the color blocking, and then what we're talking about today. So I think it'd be good to let everyone know about your blog. I do a weekly blog. Um, I do it on housing issues um be careful what you tell me because it could end up in my blog because we're going to do it every week i don't have to write every day um but my son had his friends over one time and we were um we were talking about the pandemic and i i relayed it was the blog was called pancakes and the pandemic and we were serving pancakes pancakes uh, oh. the recipe came the recipe came from um when i was in high school uh, during the oil embargo and the price of meat got to be very expensive. So, so our church created the dragon's egg because it was a St. George, the dragon's layer, the dragon's egg. And then that was, was recipes using eggs, right? So it was, it was about how to react to a crisis. They created this recipe using eggs for pancakes to get that added protein and, you know, 30, 40 years, 45 years <laughs> later, I'm serving it to this day. Um, so that was that whole thing. You know, the, this thing came from the oil embargo. What's going to last from that? So that was one thing. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So my next blog um, is going to be um, the changing dynamic of what used to be work from home, and now it's work from anywhere. Um my daughter doesn't know this yet, but uh, she and her boyfriend are going to take a six-week journey. They're going to come see us for two weeks at Thanksgiving, and they're going to work while they're here. <laughs> Obviously, on the weekends, you know, enjoy family time. Then they're going to drive to Austin because that's where his family's from, and they're going to spend time with their fam with his family and um, work, you know, during the day, you know, not on the weekends. Um, they're, they're taking their dog too, so so everybody has to meet the dog. So I'm thinking like oh, my dog. <laughs> Joey's big big time out. Um, and then they're going. Then they're driving back to Hammond, Louisiana, where uh, his other side of his family is from. And then they'll drive back, spend the night here in South Carolina, and then back up into Brooklyn. So wow, anywhere, and it's just really changing things. Um, I've seen some hotels who are um, advertising, if you can work from anywhere, why not work here? And they're showcasing, you know, their beautiful resort settings. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's the blog for next week. But if you want, if you're interested in the blog, I try to keep it short um, and lots of pictures um, and, and topical. And it's on it, really housing matters, design matters. So if you go to our website, housing design matters, um, then you will find uh, sign up for the blog and um, and hopefully uh, fantastic. So yeah, do, I yeah. 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 Absolutely. I, I love Absolutely. it. I, I was taking a look at them. And um, I think we also put it on Facebook, but I don't do Facebook. I'm one of those weird people that does Facebook. So. Not a huge fan, but um, Raul, you were uh, here yeah, to no, say I something. Was just going to mention, I love the blog. I was going through it, and uh, just like you said, they're short and sweet. A lot of images, which is really good. Well, Raul <laughs> likes pictures. No, we don't. Everybody likes we pictures. Do. We do. Yeah, but, but you know, it, so we like our pictures. We like our pictures. No, it's cool though because it, it actually kind of keeps it up. You know, like um, sometimes when it gets a little too wordy. Like, you know, you can kind of lose people. So I think you have a really good mix of like the content because you kind of mix the the pictures and within the content or within the copy. And uh, it actually was really easy to go through. So I really enjoyed it. So I was going to nice. talk to Brian about maybe sharing some of these on our Facebook because uh, they're pretty good. Yeah. I like the articles. Yeah. And, and yeah, the topics would love were to. really interesting too. Well, we're, we're very passionate about, about housing and, yeah. you know, good housing. And I think the most powerful thing that I can do um, I can't design everybody's house, but I can teach. I can teach good design mm. what to look for. So 
So really they're meant to be informative and, and um, educational. Um, yeah. So um, That's again, fantastic. No, yeah, and the power of teaching. Yeah. yeah. And then that's what we try to do is really bring people on that are passionate. I mean, obviously it's something, you know, new construction specifically, you know, is something that's near and dear to, to us. And, and you know, I, I'm blessed enough that that's my job to work within that space every day. So certainly appreciate your time. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so glad that yeah. uh, Natalie was able to uh, convince you to come on the show and, and talk about, uh, really kind of what's what's a hot topic so sincerely appreciate it certainly well thank you for having me, brian please next time yeah. thank you all right absolutely all right thank you daryl thanks Darryl. thanks everybody see you next time <laughs>